thank you for coming. I forget how many of these we've done so far. Um, does anyone? Not enough. Too many. Um, so it's been really good watching, you know, the community evolve over the years and people getting together and sharing ideas and learning from each other. Um, I would like to call attention to the GNU Radio Conference in Charlotte in September of this year. Charlotte, Charlotte, uh, North Carolina in the U.S. Um, Charlotte is a major airport. You should be able to get direct flights from London and uh, Frankfurt at least and a couple other places. And it's always a very good conference. We have the European GNU Radio Days, which I would love to go to, except you've scheduled it on top of the Embedded Linux Conference in the U.S. Come on in. We're just doing the procedurals. We have stickers. Please take stickers. The guys don't want to carry them home. Uh, we have a speaker gift of uh, Pluto. Thanks, Robin. And we will also be able to give some out to people who ask very good questions. So during the talk, think of uh, good questions to ask. And if the uh, jury awards you a Pluto, that's what will happen. And with that, is there anything else? So we'll stick to the schedule. We have to stick to the schedule because the video recordings are done by time slices. So if you end early, your next talk will start on time and your talks cannot run over, and we'll do like a five minute gap in between to change the room. The room will probably fill up and it will get very crowded and very hot. And there will probably be a line. So if you haven't been before, getting in and out can be a problem. Um, if you need food, we can probably send a runner for one occasionally. And if you need mate, we can do the same. So last week we had a hack fest at um, Eastec in uh, the Netherlands outside of Leiden, organized by Andre here. And uh, that was a very nice experience and a very nice facility, and there was a wonderful cat. And with that, we'll let Andre explain what we got done. All right, thanks, Philip. Uh, yeah, as Philip said, my name is Andre. I'm a, a ESA employee by day and a GNU Radio officer by night. And uh, I had the wonderful pleasure of inviting people to my workplace uh, three days before FOSDEM to have a little hack fest, uh, sit together, and hack on GNU Radio and related projects. And, uh, right, oh, I'm, wait, that's the wrong slides. I have to go here. Oh. Right. Uh, so the slides are also already online. You can visit this link. And uh, actually, if I switch the slides here, it will also switch on your laptop then. So it's kind of convenient for you. Uh, I had other slides before already assembled at the Hackfest, but then I left my laptop at home. So I had to, yesterday at night, I reassembled everything I could uh, remember. Ah, yeah, 2 a.m., something like that. So uh, sorry if I forgot anything we did at the Hackfest. Uh, we have a lot of people that were there, so correct me if I'm wrong somewhere. Um, all right, some facts. So uh, it was three days. We had uh, meeting rooms from the 28th until the 30th. We had food and uh, convenient uh, traveling from the next big city. We, in total, we had 14 participants, including me. And six of those were actually GNU Radio officers, so that is a good turnout, I think, from the GNU Radio project folks. And we also had a space cat on site, which uh, helped uh, improve the productivity of uh, everyone attending. And I also, at this point, want to thank my section and my division at uh, ESA Aztec for letting me invite everyone and uh, book the meeting rooms and, uh, yeah, have this wonderful event. So... Uh, Basically, this is how uh, Hackfest looks like. It's a bit uh, blurry, but uh, yeah, we don't need much. We just need a meeting room. We just need convenient uh, like support for food and drinks, and then basically some reason to go to a place, for example, like FOSDEM. So if you live or if you have something in Brussels for next year, I think we will be happy to arrange something. 
Right. Uh, there's the uh, space cat that we visited and had some quality time with it. And it's actually a real staff, so it has a badge and it can go in and out of the facility, so no problem there. So what kind of uh, topics were we working on? So uh, we had one group that was basically dedicated three days uh, working on the scheduler and the runtime. And it was, uh, had some high profile members, so Marcus Müller was there, uh, Bastian Blössel, and some other Grenadio core developers who actually started from scratch and uh, made some progress on that. Then uh, we had a group dedicated to Gnradio 3.8 out of free module porting and uh, also coming up with a way how to create a binary package feed for out of three modules because right now we have pi bombs and you have to compile everything from source and it's not super convenient for every end user we currently have out there. And then we also at the last day we had some smaller group that uh, looked at uh, SIGMF and how to improve the ecosystem in regard uh, with regard to uh, SIGMF. So uh, the schedule and runtime. So the first day the group had a brainstorming session and uh, basically assembled a two-page document, something like that, uh, with thoughts and uh, basically all the collected lessons learned, everything how to write it correctly. Um, and the second and third day they basically spent uh, Im implementing a first proof of concept and uh, it's actually already a public Git, Git repo which can be accessed uh, at this URL. Right, um, then for the Gnoradio 3.8 out of free module porting, we uh, had some features that were implemented for C Ah, no, no, this was, wait, uh, yep. So uh, Zach did, had some effort uh, actually implementing the Qt GUI in Osmo Com FFT. So I, I don't know, I think a lot of you know Osmo Com FFT and it previously used the WX GUI, I think, in Grenadio 3.7. And now it will hopefully soon after the pull request or patches get merged, support Qt and so with that also Gnoradio 3.8 which is a nice effort, so some more plots from Osmocom FFT, how it looks with Qt. Also, uh, Nicolas made an effort to actually have one extra column in Sigran, which displays the supported versions, so if you have an out of tree module, you can write in your manifest file which versions you support, and we will automatically display this in Sigran now. And also, if you have a logo, and we click on one of the pages here, you can have your logo shown there. So that's some small fixes, but it's a quality of life improvement for the packages. So also if someone wants to port some modules from 3.7 to 3.8, you can just, you can just look at the list and uh, pick one of your favorite modules that are not yet ported. Yeah, and uh, for the automatic package feed for the other three modules, I was basically looking at that with uh, several other people, how to do it the most efficient way. And the most efficient way will be probably to add more metadata to the PyBombs recipes, then have a automatic, uh, let's say, templating script, which then templates my Ubuntu or Debian source package files. And then we can feed it through some CI pipeline which uh, I spent a bit uh, writing the templates. And there's also Git repo, which is already public, but uh, I forgot to put the link here. Um, and hopefully soon I will be able to progress on this in an efficient manner. Right, uh, and then on SIGMF tooling, uh, yeah, we want to imp implement and uh, support as many external tools or tools around the Nikon Radio ecosystem with SIGMF. And uh, yeah, one part of that is, for example, to have one library or header-only library for C++, which has a good uh, packaging in downstream packages. So I looked at that and posted the pull request to the DeepSig libsigmf repo, which improves the CMake and hopefully 
I get some reviews and uh, get this code merged after the Hackfest. Yeah, also Schneider did some effort to actually implement SIGMF in or look at his old code to implement SIGMF in, in Spectrum. So if you have a, a SIGMF annotated file, you can load it in Spectrum and uh, then have like these annotations displayed inside of your uh, Spectrum. Yeah. Right. Also, at Hackfest we do, do fun activities and being at the European Space Research and Technology Center, it has some upsides so we can, for example, watch uh, 3D CGI and real footage of the, uh, of the ISS, so basically a nice image movie of us floating through the ISS and also learning a lot about microgravity and why we actually do some space research and also visiting the concurrent design facility at Aztec and learning on about how to actually do spacecraft design in the early stages to get something into space. So conclusions, we have some real progress, actu actual code of uh, Gnurade runtime and scheduler, thanks to the folks working hard and not for three days. We have some packages, I, I actually forgot some packages that got 3.8 updates because yeah, the slides were done tonight. Um, and some more interest in SIGMF and maybe we get some more tooling done soon. There's an idea to actually have a GSOC also working on that. Maybe some, some student in this room or from outside this room wants to uh, work on that as well. And uh, yeah. Thanks for your attention and uh, just join the next Hackfest and I don't know when we will have the next Hackfest so we are very welcome to suggestions and also if there's some conference or some other event in proximity and there's like three days before that we can have a meeting room for 20 people or 10 depending on the location. Just uh, come, come up, chat with us and we might be able to have another one. Yeah, that's about all I have right now. We have an event. Yeah.